Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a joyful time it is once again to welcome you to this special session of the Gulag Devotion. This is your center for biblically authoritative teachings. Why? Because these are the true teachings of God's word based on the scriptures. And you can verify them for yourself. If you are born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you are watching, you don't need to watch it many times to know whether what we are sharing with you is what is upon the Father's heart. And we rely on you to recommend the Gulag Devotion to your friends, minister friends, church friends, other friends, welcome them. Because this is what everybody needs now. It is time for every child of God to become more resolute in your belief. The days of eating, I mean, uh, uh, desserts here and there are past. You need to know the Bible for yourself. And we are glad that God has given us the responsibility and the ability to bring to you these truths. Today we're going to continue our discussion on the house of God. We had that in our previous episode, understanding what the house of God is. The Spirit of God made it clear to us that from 1 Timothy 3.15, the house of God is the church of the living God, the ground and the field of truth. So we made it clear that the house of God is not the building per se. It is not uh, a social gathering. The defining feature of the house of God is the visible presence of the living God in the garden place of the sons and daughters of God. And as a child of God, if you want to say something about the house, you have to recognize that this is what you're talking about. And if you want something to be done in the house of God, you have to recognize that this is what you're talking about. If you don't know this fundamental fact about the house of God, you will lump the house of God into what is called a social gathering. And you'll be making a mystic concerning your attitude towards the house of God. Because you will be judged for whatever you say about the house of God that is not consistent with what it really is. Because it is called false talking or false writing. And that is why it's very important for you to know about the house of God. If you are ready for today, we can share in a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, our hearts are open. Our minds are led. Our bodies are set. To receive without destruction the impartation of your truth. We are ready in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. So if you have your mind spread today, our topic is you are the house of God. You are the house of God. Wow. So in our first or our previous episode, we said the house of God is the place where the physical presence of God is expressed, or the presence of God is physically expressed. And today we are hearing that you are the house of God. Wow. And the you here refers to anyone who has been born again. Anyone who has received Christ. Because John chapter 1 verse 12 clearly tells us that any human being, as many human beings as received Jesus, have become the sons of God. So if you have received Jesus, you are a son, you are a daughter of God. 
And then you, this son of God, or you, this daughter of God, you are the house of God. Did you know that? Oh, glory to God. Let's take our Bibles to our main scripture for today, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, the 19th verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. It says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Wow. It says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God? And ye are not your own. What our verse was just trying to tell us is that the body of the one who has Christ is where the Holy Ghost dwells. Temple simply means the dwelling place, the house. And we know from Acts chapter 5, when Sapphira and Ananias lied, Peter said that they have lied not unto men but they've lied unto God when he was dealing with the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit is God. And the Bible says that our, our, our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. Oh my God, my God, my God. Does this mean something very special to you, son of God, daughter of God? The fact that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Has something happened in you by the reading of the scripture? I don't know what happens to people when they read the scriptures. But to be reminded this morning or this time that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost just changes many things. No. Is this true? Yes. This body of yours, it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. What did we say the house of God was? The house of God is the church of the living God, where the presence of God is physically expressed. So if my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, it means that if you are looking for God, you can find him in my body. So what is my body then? My body is now the church. So I am the church of God. So it means I am the church of God. I am the house of God. So the church of God refers to individual sons and daughters of God or persons who have been born again. Every individual son or daughter of God is the church of God. Why? Because in him or her is the fullness of God. And where the, the presence of the living God can be visibly found, that place is the house of God. This is why we are saying that you are the house of God. We put here that one fact that every Christian must settle on is that he or she is the house of God. This is so, 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 so important. You know, thank you, Holy Spirit. There are things that have been so said severally that they have become common to many people. And so when they are hearing them again, they don't seem to make impressions because people are not listening to them as if they were new things because in their minds, they know them already. Because every good child of God knows what I'm sharing and that the Holy Spirit lives in me. My question is, what has that meant to you all this while? For instance, if over this period of the COVID-19 pandemic, you were a child of God that at any point in time you were living in fear of your body becoming taken over by a virus. Did you remember ever that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? If this was a pulsating truth, there wouldn't have been a moment when you ever 
was afraid of an invader, an external invasion into the house. <laughs> Glory to God. I know of even shrines where wicked people can, will not even go there to try to misbehave. Because a shrine is, is like a, a place where a, 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 is dedicated, a place that is dedicated to a, a fetish or something. How about where the Holy Ghost lives? Have, has, have you ever thought about this? Okay, how about the sons of God who are busy quaffing down gallons of alcohol and smoking weed and everything to their bodies? Have they ever realized that it is the body of the temple of God? Because what, what will you put into the temple of God? Is this liquor, hard liquor? How about those who are carrying that same thing and then they are sleeping with prostitutes? Sleeping with people who are not their husbands and wives? People have never taken scripture serious. And probably that's why they are not having the results of the house of God in their bodies. Do you revere your body? Do you give reverence to your body because it is the house of God? I know people that even when, before they step into, uh, 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 let's say, the church, the building, they, they genuflect, they bow. But they never knew that their bodies, to, the same people go to the funeral, they are coughing down beer, bottles of beer, destroying the body in the temple. And before they enter another physical temple, they bow. In obeisance to which God, is it not that God that was in you? I'm just saying this to let it dawn on you that you are so special. Your body is so, so special because of who the Bible says lives in that body. You should be so special when you sit in the vehicle. This is the temple of God. If you're a young lady, don't allow men to touch that body anyhow. It is the temple of God. And if you're a young man, don't be touching anything anyhow with your body. It is the temple of God. Don't drink just anything into your body. Don't sleep just anywhere. Take care of the temple of God. Honor it as such. If you don't, if, if you don't honor the, your body as the temple of God, you will have a lot of non-temple results. I'm just so blessed by the scripture, I have not been able to move from it. He says, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Kobaraka Sata. Hey, yeah. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Sagabaya. Hey, I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you say this enough, it will dawn on you that headache is illegal. Diabetes is illegal. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Maba Sokopata. Eject that disease. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Eject blindness. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Allow the Holy Ghost to take charge of his temple. So me, disease is illegal in my body. Infirmities are illegal in my body. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, any disease hiding anywhere, I know I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. I say, get out. If you were told you were positive for COVID-19 and you knew this, you will not already be preparing yourself for ventilator. Oh, I'm so blessed. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. As a child of God, you have to know this. Let it, let it inundate the way you think. Let it in on death the way you think. Yeah. There are Christians who are not happy about their body. Especially ladies. Some are, some are crying that they are thin. Others are crying that they are big. Did you know you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? It matters not the physical shape. What matters is what is in you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I want you to go out today celebrating this fact. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. Don't run away from anything. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are a shrine. Hey, I'm a shrine of God. Hey, I'm a shrine of God. So when you are walking in a dark place, don't be afraid of who will attack me. You are the shrine of God. 
Even if any evil person comes near that shrine of God, Kaaba is a Kaaba. Can you imagine what will happen to him? You are the temple of God. You are the shrine of God. Therefore, you are the church. You are the house of God. The Holy Ghost doesn't want me to move from this point. He wants you to sink until it dawns on you that I am the temple of God. Oh, my Kabado Sandaraba Sakadaba Hata. Oh, Rama Santa Kababa. My hands are part of the temple of God. My eyes are part of the temple of God. My knees are part of the temple of God. Lima Komandoni Basakababa. Rebe Dozo Kobalabadaza. I'm the temple of God. I'm the temple of God. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh, praise God. Not only is the Holy Ghost inside you. If you read 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13, the Bible says of everyone that has received Christ that the Holy Ghost has baptized you into one body. You have been joined to the mystical body of Christ. You are united inseparably with Christ. So in first. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, the Bible says that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So the Holy Ghost is in you. You are one with Jesus. <laughs> 1 John 4, 15 says that if you have declared that Jesus is the Son of God, then God is in you and you are in God. So the Father too is in you. That is why we shout, I am the fullness of the Godhead. Why? Because Papa God is in me. I'm one with Jesus. And the Holy Ghost just Mark It can get better than this. I know who I am. I am trouble free. I am resistant to trouble. Are you hearing me? I am indomitable. I'm, in, I'm, I'm unconquerable. That is who you are. Walk with this mentality. I am the house of God. I'm not the one running away in fear of anything in this world. I am the house of God. We said that, considering 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 6, 17, the born again is not separate from God. That's what in essence it means. That is why Christianity is the expression of the divine life and not one of the numerous religions. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is the working out, the expression, the exhibition of the life of God that brought you into being. You are now a partaker of the divine nature because your body is covering Kadumayaba. <laughs> your body is covering a deity. The world has no idea who we are. And apparently the church and some sons and daughters God have no idea who they are. And so that is why the world is thinking about them such way. If the church knew that inside this flesh is this Godhead. Oh my God. The church, the world have been running to us individually for solutions. Our scripture today, as we said, 1 Corinthians 6.19 Further shows us that not only are we one in spirit with God, but our physical bodies actually carry God. So we are God carriers. And as powerful as that is, that is even for babes. We are not just God carriers. You, you, if you say that, then you're talking about the physical body. But the real we who are in this body, we are the God the body is carrying. Because anyone that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So we are one with Jesus. Are you following? God is in us. We are in God. He begot us with his nature. So the us now that this body is covering, we are in together with the Holy Ghost. So we make the body a carrier of God. So, okay, if you look at my body and say, this body is a God carrier, you are right. But the me that the body carries, I'm God. And I must know that and speak like that and think like that and talk like that. If there was any disease out there or any problem out there that I hear that God has arrived, that thing will fly. 
But if I never knew I was God inside and thought I was just another human being, I'll be locked in. Israelites, they saw the giants and they said that we are as grasshoppers when they were people of promise. What happened to them? They died being people of promise. But two of them said no. We are people of promise, so we know it. What happened? They lived. Shall I know who I am? I know who I am. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we said here that, so when we say the house of God, you are the house of God. So one dimension of what the house of God is, is that individual sons of God are houses of God. Why? Because in them is the visible presence of God. Remember the primary between the house of God, the church of the living God, the place where God's presence can physically be located. That place is the house of God. So now if I am one with God, if the Holy Ghost lives in my body, then I am the house of God. So anybody who sees me and judges me wrongly, judges the house of God wrongly. And is at risk of invoking the judgment of God. So anybody who sees a child of God and misjudges him wrongly is at risk. Except that child of God doesn't also know who he is. That is why God said, touch not the anointed. We're talking only about ministers. The sons of God are temple. These are holy beings. So those who are ready every time to go and misbehave with Christians, <laughs> you have died before them. Because they are waking up to know who they are by these teachings. We said that accepting and understanding this truth changes, your, changes how you relate with Papa God and how you live. The truth that you are the house of God. If you are the house of God, every moment is an opportunity for fellowship, worship, and prayer. So apart from knowing these great truths, that you are a divine being because your body encases, your body houses God, deity in who is you because you are one with God and you are one with the Holy Ghost. The other important thing is that you will never feel far away from God because the Holy Ghost co-dwells in the same body with you. In fact, you are one spirit. So why will you wait for special times to pray? Why will you wait for special times and special places to pray? You can talk to him 24-7, every minute, every hour. So you see, that's why he said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the constant communion, the constant partnership, the constant intermingling of the Holy Spirit be with you. Any Christian whose life is dry will account for it. Because it is not like in the olden days where you need to travel to Jerusalem to fellowship with God. When you sleep, when you wake, when you walk, wherever you are, you are in a consistent intermingling with the Holy Ghost. Why can't you practice this until that becomes your consciousness? So why will you feel dry? You know that Christians, after they pray for two, three days, they feel, as I know, they are dry. They are dry. Because they don't know that they are the house of God. You don't need to go anywhere to meet God. He has been with you all, the, all this while. You don't pay anything to say, Father, I love you. I bless you. I worship you. You don't pay anything to keep your mentality on him. You don't pay anything to keep your imaginations on him. You don't need to travel far. And if you do these things, you will be more saturated with God than with the world. You know whether you are fellowship with him or not. But knowing whether it is rather fear and worries and troubles and cares that are surrounded your life. If your body is the house of God, that means you are holy. You are, you are righteous. And this holiness and righteousness is what should shine forth from you. Anyone who comes near you has come to God. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Do you see how people go to buildings and say, I've come to church. If somebody meets you, you should be conscious that he has met God. Yeah. I went somewhere to meet somebody and I asked the person, if Jesus was here, what would we, we, we want Jesus to do? That's his smile. I said, right. 
You have seen me. You have seen Jesus. I didn't need to pray a long prayer. You, you, this might be the first time you might have been hearing this from someone living now. But if you have seen me, you have seen God. If you have heard me, you have heard God. If I ever touch you, God has touched you. And I'm not teaching theory. That is real. Because I'm the fullness of the Godhead. And if you are born again, that is who you are. All you need to do is to meditate on these things until they become your reality. Wherever you walk, you will walk in the consciousness of divinity having arrived at that place. Oh, hallelujah. Shout, I'm the house of God. I'm the house of God. We want to worship God by saying these things in the man's spirit. You say with me, say, I exalt you, almighty Father. Say, what a privilege it is to carry God. Say with me, you are worthy of my worship. You are worthy of my adoration. And you are worthy of my love. Lift your hands now and worship him in other tongues. Mount Tokobanda Kabaraba. Worship him because he's in you. He's one with you. Worship him because you are, the, you are his temple. Librando Kebaraba. Legrado Segaraba Santa Kabaraba. Lava Koshende. Gebada Gadoza. Mabronte Kebaraba. Tosandini Kapa. Thank you, Father. Oh, we celebrate you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. If you have been watching me on this episode, this is a time to become a child of God. There's so much in Christ. Imagine you and God becoming one and living in the same body. Your body becoming disease-free and, and proof to many troubles in this world. Why? You are now the shrine of God. This can become yours. It doesn't become yours by wishing. It becomes yours by getting born of God. And you can get born of God when you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead after he died to reconcile the world to God and that he ascended. And as we speak now, he's in heaven, and he shall soon return to take the church and further return to judge the world. If you believe this about Jesus, then declare that Jesus is Lord. And this acknowledgement will seal up your faith in him, and you'll be born of God. If you want to do that, say this after me. Say, so, dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart, I believe that by your resurrection from the dead, you made eternal life available. I receive this life into my spirit by saying Jesus is Lord. And by this declaration, I am born again. I've done this with all your heart. You are born again. Make sure to contact us and we'll help you to grow. Remain planted in Christ by joining the Bible teaching church. And uh, also make sure you connect, follow us on our social media platforms and the glad devotion. I'm surely going to come your way again in our next episode as we continue to eat along the subject of the house of God. So then, life is good. Enjoy. This book, Daddy Holy Spirit, is a classic on how to work with the Holy Spirit. Working with the Holy Ghost is very important in being relevant in this final book. And this book is to help get the Holy Spirit restored to His place in our lives as our Father and restored to the church as the father of the church and to be able to walk with him. And everyone must have a copy. Your life will never be the same. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.